Got a letter here um, from a brother. I'm going to keep his name private. Asked a good question. Just thought I'd put this out in a little video for other brethren that have sim similar questions. It says here, Brother Brian, I recently discovered your channel on YouTube. All I can say is uh, be encouraged and keep up the good fight of faith. The word that the Lord has given you is true and in desperate need in these times. On one of your videos, you mentioned that you do the ministry full time. I too know that the Lord has called me to start a ministry. I find it very hard to juggle my job with study, prayer, and having meetings, etc. I know in the book of Acts that even the apostles had the same problem in the beginning of their ministry. If you could find the time to answer this question, for me I would greatly appreciate it. How are you able to make a living to provide for your family in a home fellowship ministry? I guess I am asking through which avenues do you earn a living, evangelism, donations, etc. I would love to lay aside the work that I do for a living in order to commit to the ministry full time, but I have no idea where to start. I am the sole provider for my family. I have no problem stepping out in faith. I would just like to hear what, how you are doing it to give myself some ideas and encouragement. Any information or ideas that you can give me would be greatly appreciated. Normally I wouldn't ask someone a question like this. I feel that you would provide an honest answer in spirit and in truth. Thank you in advance for any help that you can give or wisdom that you can share. Okay, good question. Um, let me just read some scripture here real quickly just to kind of show you what the deal is going to be here. Um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. Read a couple verses down through here. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were care also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That's a big key to it. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound, I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, and an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Okay? So, what do we see there? Well, when you go into full-time ministry, you will learn both how to be abased and how to abound. Uh, there will be times when you will be abased to the point of thinking, how on earth am I going to make this, this, you know, how am I going to pay my bills? Um, I can remember uh, back years and years ago when I first got married, uh, there were times I had a stick shift truck, you know, Ford Ranger at the time, and um, older truck, you know, I it, had it for many years. And I remember different times I'd get on a hill, you know, I'd stick it in neutral and just let the thing idle, you know, to save gas money. And it was rough. I mean, it was, it was financially, it was very, very difficult. And it's not that I didn't want to have a job or something like that. There were many times I tried to make a living apart from ministry. And it was just like, the Lord just would not bless it. I just was like, I don't understand, Lord. I'm just going, I have to make money here. I mean, I'm staying in this house. It turned out to be a really bad situation. It was, you know, not even going to get into all this stuff there. But uh, you'll find that um, the Lord will put you through some testing early on if it is, in fact, His will. Um, that's one thing that you're going to have to learn with the Lord. Um, it's kind of like you have to, He'll put you through some testing, a time of testing and proving. And, um, you know, you just kind of say, okay, Lord, you, do you want me to do this ministry full time? And you get kind of a, you know, you see some things there. People say, hey, could you do a study on this? Or, hey, could you do a video on that? Or, would you be willing to go and, you know, whatever. And <clears throat> you do it and, and somebody says, hey, I really appreciate it. I mean, when I first started in ministry, I was like, I'm not taking donations. I'm just going to, you know, make videos. And, and uh, I mean, that was the original intent. Um, I don't even know if I have. Yeah, right there. Right here, right there is my very first DVD I brought out. Okay, very first one. Uh, very poorly done. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was bad. And then I got better and better and better as time went by. But I never intended, at the time I was doing that, the video ministry, King James Video Ministries, when it first started, I had no intention of, of becoming a, a, you know, pastoring a house church. 
uh, home fellowship, you know. And um, I was actually going to a Baptist church at that time, at that time and so I was just kind of like, well, I'm just going to do the video ministry. And, and uh, so my idea for full-time ministry was not being a pastor. Um, later on, it became a thing where, you know, we started the home fellowship, Bible Believers Fellowship, and uh, I still was not making a, you know, what would even be close to being called a living, you know, from that because I was a single guy, very much like Paul, and I just kind of, um, I did get, you know, I started to get people saying, you know, hey, you're doing great work here, you're putting out a lot of sermons for free, could you know, could we donate to the ministry? Could we donate to you? Could we, you know, help you with bills that you might have? And I was just, I was used to going months at a time without any income at all. You know, I lived with, you know, my parents essentially, um, you know, and, and I was just, didn't have much money. And um, I would do some little odd jobs here and there, but I was really just studying and wanting to get the truth out. And uh, I'd spent, Quite a few years, just that's all I was doing, just studying, 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 studying. I just kind of get, got away from the whole workforce thing. Um, would I have done that again if I was married? No. No, I would not have. Um, my life would have turned out very differently if I had been married in that time period. But as a single man, things were a little bit different. Um, but I got married, and, uh, and the Lord, I was like, okay, you know, one of the reasons I moved up to the place in northern Pennsylvania, northwestern Pennsylvania, was because they were saying about, you know, I could have, I could make an income from the store that I was going to be helping out at and helping with the ministry and the store. And, and I was thinking of, okay, I'm going to have to make a living, so I'm going to work a second job. And I would have done that, but it was just like the Lord didn't want it. And every time I tried, I mean, it was like I was trying to make a living and I tried to have other ways of making an income and it just, it was just failing, and it was like I was putting out videos occasionally as I could, um, and the Lord was blessing it, and 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 just like okay, if this what's if this is what you want, Lord, and the, my point I'm trying to make is you will learn that abasing, abounding thing. You will learn that if you go into full time ministry, um, it's very, going to be very difficult for you with a wife and children. Uh, again. Had I been in the situation I'm in now, back then, with now we have a son, uh, again, I, we couldn't have made it. Um, you know, but uh, what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to try. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to try it. Um, I would just kind of slowly say, okay, Lord, I'm not going to just go on and full, quit my full-time job. Maybe, you know, do a little bit of part-time stuff or whatever else. Um, you know, pastoring, again, pastoring a small home fellowship, uh, you can't expect the people there to um, support you to the point of their, you know, giving you enough money there that you're able to survive and whatever else. Um, if it's a small fellowship, you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, there's going to have to be a secondary income. Um, you're going to have to do some kind of a ministry online or something in your area, maybe writing books where you can make an income from the book writing. Again, that's going to be difficult. Um, this, you know, I'm being honest here. Um, but I mean, if, you know, if the Lord wants you in it, you're going to be in it. Just as simple as that. I mean, the Lord uh, has had to drag me kicking and screaming for a lot of the time uh, in, in my ministry. <laughs> Just like, no, 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 Lord, I don't, I, want, I don't want to do ministry. Let me do something else. You know, go on, boy. <laughs> You know, and, and uh, here I am, you know, and, and um, I mean, we're doing fine. We're, we're all right. We have, you know, food in the refrigerator and, and uh, bills are paid and lights are on. <laughs> Roof are over our heads and things. But, uh, you know, we're definitely not getting rich or anything. But, um, you know, in terms of physical, you know, monetary things, um, but we are quite blessed. And um, there's, to me, there's no better life. And I really hope and pray that I can stay in ministry from now up until the rapture. Uh, keep giving the devil uh, heartburn and things like that. That's what we live for. But uh, if the day would ever come, here again, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of advice. Um, if the day would ever come that this video ministry gets shut down uh, as far as being online and the donations go down, I'm going to be working a secular job. Um, now, I've been self-employed for so many years, I 
prefer to do that. And uh, just to give you a little another insight to people out there, um, I do make some income occasionally that's not ministry related. Um, sometimes I will uh, buy things and fix things up uh, and sell them on Craigslist or I used to do eBay a lot more um, just for a little bit of side income. Um, and I do believe that that is a good thing to do. Uh, I mean, Jesus, you know, they're seeing him and they're like, isn't this the carpenter? I mean, you know, they're not saying, oh, I think he once was a carpenter, you know. And I, I can't say, you know, when Jesus entered the ministry, was he still doing some little odd jobs? The Bible doesn't say that. Um, I'm just simply saying he was known as a carpenter. Uh, Paul, you know, he wrought the same craft as Aquila and Priscilla. They were all tent makers. Um, so, you know, I think occasionally it's it's a good thing to have other incomes that you can fall back on. I think it's it's also very therapeutic sometimes to just get away from the ministry, just to step back and say, okay, you know what? I got to go out and work on this vehicle or I got to go build this building or I have to go make this thing or whatever else, you know. Um, in other words, secondary income can actually be a good de-stressing activity because when you get into full-time ministry, it's extremely stressful. Um, <clears throat> so a home fellowship, I would say, um, unless you can find some other kind of a ministry, a video ministry, writing ministry, something like that, um, I would say a part-time job, you know. Um, but, I mean, again, the Lord's going to direct you in this. I can't really give a, you know, I feel God is saying this to you today. You're going to have to deal with God on this issue. Um, if you go into some kind of a video ministry, uh, it might be slow for a while. And, you know, again, you're going to have to weigh that out. If you're married and, you know, you say you're married, you have children, weigh it out. Is this really what the Lord wants? Um <clears throat> you know, one of the most dangerous things is when you go into ministry to the temptation is going to come up to compromise, you know, to um, make more money, you know. And I made the decision back when I first got onto YouTube and they started to try to woo me in with this whole thing of monetize your videos. And I was just like, I'm not going to monetize my videos because then I'm taking money from lost people, taking money from secular people and... You know, and then if, if I eventually have to turn against them because they're radically pro-sodomite or whatever else, I say, I, hey, what you're doing is wrong. They'll say, you've been taking our money for all these years. Force me into a hypocritical position. And, of course, you know, then the temptation's there, too, of, you know, well, maybe I should just tone it down a little bit so I can make, you know, my little dividend checks or whatever you get, you know, your little uh, monetized video checks, whatever you call the things. You know, you get you get that back, and you say, "Well, maybe, you know, I, I preached kind of a nice message there, and it it got me a lot more views, which led to more money and things, more like you know, people hitting the like button and stuff like this. So maybe I should kind of preach more that way. Bad. So uh, really, I can I can say you're going to have to answer that question between you and the Lord, um, and you will. If Lord's will is for you to be full-time ministry and you're able to, to do it in a way that you can take donations, um, you know, and again, you're going to have to make it clear to people. As a Bible believer, um, you're not going to be 501c3. 501c3, really bad idea. Um, I actually heard that Donald Trump has come out and said things against 501c3. And people are like, oh, see, it's good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe more on that in the future, but... Um, you know, it's just, it's kind of hard for me to say, you know, um, you're just going to have to weigh it out. And uh, if you do, if the Lord does have you for the ministry, you're going to struggle. Um, and again, you're going to have to talk this over with your wife and children. You know, it's not that they have to make the decision. I mean, you're the man of the home. You're going to have to be the one that makes the final decision. But you have to let them know, hey, you know, we might all have to do some suffering. I mean, the Lord's blessed me with a very, very good wife that's been very understanding. She's just like, we're, we don't ever go out to eat. We don't, we don't waste, you know, money. Um, I mean, if we ever waste money, if we ever spend something extravagantly, we usually feel bad about it. Just like, like the one year we got lobster for my birthday and we were both like, oh man, we shouldn't have done that. That was bad, <laughs> you know, which is mild compared to what a lot of these, you know, people do. But, uh, you know, so it's... 
weigh it out. Um, pray about it. Um, don't expect an easy time. And let your wife and children know about that. And if they support you in it, and if they say, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll be behind you no matter what, um, go for it. So that's how I would answer your question. Hopefully that answers your question. So uh, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.